going to have a slight diversion from the ball joint mod here. Um, this is a, a single piece Weber adapter. This adapts, this bolts down to uh, an L series uh, Datsun intake. There's uh, other ones too. It also fits the uh, E and J series uh, engines as well. And basically when you, when you buy them new, they come with longer studs that go into the manifold here and go all the way up through this plate carburetor. Two Allens, two uh, short head Allens go in here and then uh, two studs from the manifold get taken out and uh, uh, threaded in here. So anyway, I had these water jet cut, these blanks here, one in uh, three eighths, this one's in half inch. Um, and you know, I figured one of these days I'd play around with them and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to complete them. I just thought, well, while I was figuring out a couple things for some CAD work I'm doing, I would uh, shoot a little video. What I'm doing here is uh, it's real easy to tell, you know, the holes match up and everything. Okay. Um, the issue is, is how to put this bevel in here, you know, um, what angle that's at and everything like that. So, because now it's easy enough, these two are the same thickness. So I can measure this angle. Okay. Um, this is a part of this kit here, which is a 18-piece angle gauge set. Got it through uh, Enco. Anyway, that's that's almost exactly 35. Really, really close. Certainly close enough to uh, make it 35 and call it good. Um, you know, so I could I could cut that bevel uh, at 35 and match up fairly close. So the thing is, is uh, with it being half inch. I need to have a different angle. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a hole there, and just as a, as a little note to myself, I'm going to put a line out there. Now, what I'm going to do here is uh, find out what the diameter is, and the diameter is basically one three, an inch three hundred and fifty thousandths. Okay, somewhere right around there. Uh, let's call it sixty, actually. Um, so, uh, 1.36, that's going to put us down to, uh, uh, half of 360 is 180, so 180 over, uh, 5. Okay, and that should give us half. Now, I don't need that there anymore, at least not for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mark center here, and none of this has to be extremely precise, okay? But when I put this back down on here... Since I don't have any reference to measure diameter all the way across, I need to measure it from center there, basically. So I'm going to hold that there as close as I can and run that out to center. And I got, uh, I got, uh, I got about one, I got about one, one sixty. Uh, close enough. Okay, um, what that tells me is, and I, I don't even really need to know that, all I need to do is do this then, okay, that is where the, the slope goes out to, okay, so, uh, if I go back to my uh, 680, I should be able to mark uh, center, and just for now I'm just going to eyeball it. Okay, um, I could actually, you know, take a square and, and go on here and, and uh, do that. Anyway, what, it, what I need to do is I, I want to uh, put this, the center of this hole, on edge like this, right about where center is. Okay, mark my thickness. And what that's going to tell me is, is it's going to tell me how far out uh, that is. Okay. So now if you look at it here, this is probably getting long-winded and that stuff, but here's the edge of the of the thing. So it's going to run from this point, which is actually there, because this is the side view, that's the top view. It's going to run at that angle there. So let's, uh, doesn't look quite like 45, but I can try 40, might be more. Oh, 40 is really close. 40 would, 40 would cause it to push out just a little bit, uh, which would probably be fine. I'd probably have to do it once and test it to 
to find out. But let's throw a let's throw a 45 on there. Get an idea. All right, 45 is what 45 would do is if I took it out to the exact measurement here, it would scallop the edge of the hole here and open it up just a little bit. Increase flow just a little bit. Really wouldn't uh, hurt too much, and it wouldn't be wouldn't really uh, increase flow at all because this is what the intake has. Okay, this is what the Weber has. Uh, so I want to be close in there. I think the 40 was uh, closer than the 45. Uh, now the trick would be to hold this. Well, actually the half inch one. You know, to hold that at 40 degrees. You know, to be able to mill down on that uh, and do it. I don't know that I'm going to follow through on that. I just wanted to take some measurements today. All right, <clears throat> that's going to be a little bit uh, tricky. I already got the one side done, and it's it's at a 45 degree angle basically. Um, it needs to be more round. I'm using a cutter that's uh, too small. Um, uh, a hole saw maybe, uh, something like that. But anyway, I wanted it to uh, <clears throat> wanted it to blend in pretty decent. This will be most of the metal removal. Uh, I can come back in and tweak it a little bit here, but uh, uh, with it at an angle, I'm not going a full half inch in to touch the, the back of that, uh, the bottom of the circle back here where the angle, the bevel is. Uh, it, uh, I actually put the edge right here on the front, and then I put a, a small square in the back and ran the, the mill, uh, the end mill back until it touched, and I got uh, basically uh, 400, something like that. Uh, might have been 300. Might have been 300. Yeah, because this is the 3 ace plate. Um, so it's 3, 0.375 thick. I only have to go back 0 .300, 0 0.3 because of uh, the angle it's at. So anyway, that makes it uh, just touch there. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to pull it out 20 thousandths, go that way 20 thousandths, uh, which is what I just did on this side. And if I can pull it off, then I'll have both sides beveled at uh, 45 degrees. I'll play with it from there, but uh, I probably won't show the whole thing, but... Uh, it's uh, uh, it's a little weird trying to run both uh, knobs at the same time. They were running in the same direction. Now they're going to be running backwards. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> And I'm stopping at 20 thousandths increments just so I don't get one too far ahead of the other kind of thing. And I've got it spinning fairly slow, so uh, apparently to keep the noise down, but as you can see, I'm moving so slow that there's no point in trying to cut any faster. And I'm not cutting because what I'm doing is I'm following the exact same path because I'm doing the x-axis in the wrong, the uh, y-axis in the wrong direction. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. So now I'm going to go back and turn the wheel the other way. <laughs> that came out pretty nice. I think I'm going to go in there and uh, and uh, walk it sideways a little bit there uh, and try to scallop out a bit more there because uh, you know I do want you know kind of a bigger, flatter. Uh, scoop in there because otherwise the uh, flat spots on either side here will uh, be in the bore of the uh, Weber. Well I think it came out pretty decent. Um, it was a whole lot easier basically what I did was uh, I just started walking this around by eye uh, but this was the near side to me. This side was a little harder because <laughs> I couldn't see it um, but you know the reality is a uh, rat tail file will uh, uh, Clean that up pretty nicely. Um, you know, actually, if I have a, uh, I don't know if I do, uh, an inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth maybe, uh, drum sander, 
put that in the drill press and clean that up just a little bit that would uh, blend those in nicely uh, so that's pretty much it um, turn it sideways there this is the 35 degree um, might be able to see past my fingers there this one's got a little bit more taper and uh, well let's do it with this hand so that matches perfectly I got I got that lined up on the mill pretty good uh, that one that was a little bit shallower of a taper so since I'm down to just a sharp an edge here I would guess that this isn't out quite as far uh, which is fine like I said any of that can get uh, trimmed up and uh, tweaked a little bit with uh, uh, what do you call it now I just noticed that there's a uh, a step in this um, hmm hmm <laughs> That'd be a whole lot harder to uh, to do. Not quite sure how to do that. It would uh, there's a not a step a taper. They're angled in. Um, you know if I could mount that on the rotary table at, at that angle, you know then I could just ratchet that around and and no big deal. Uh, that might be the way to do that too. You know clamp it on the rotary table. Clamping it on the rotary table would be a royal pain in the ass. Uh, that would be a hard setup. So, uh, I don't know, that might be it for playing with that today, forever, for that matter, who knows. Well, we will see what happens. Um, you know, I'm sure everybody's seen uh, guys on uh, YouTube and stuff like that using uh, router bits, carbide router bits to uh, machine aluminum rims and that kind of stuff. So, uh, basically, that's what I'm going to do here, uh, because a router bit, I bought one yesterday for like $29, $30. Bucks. Uh, it turns out I had the equivalent one here in the shop so uh, that one's going back but uh, uh, it turns out that this one is uh, just a hair bigger than that hole which means that by the time I get down three-eighths of an inch in there that's going to create a little bit of uh, taper and create that uh, that taper that uh, I think I pointed out on the last one but uh, so we'll see now I've got the speed turned up on uh, the mill to basically as fast as it'll go uh, 2500 I think um, yeah so, I got the lid closed this time because uh, spinning that fast, I don't want one of those stupid belts to snap and <laughs> hit me in the head. Um, by spinning it really fast, uh, I'm going to be able to take really light bites. I don't want to, uh, uh, I don't want it to, you know, dig in and, and grab, which it may have a tendency to do because this is a down pulling bit. Uh, basically, the, the slope is like that, so as it goes in, it's going to tend to want to pull itself in further so uh, I don't really want that happening so we'll see what happens here I should probably uh, let's see how bad it chips uh, spits uh, chips um, anyway once I get that taper made then I can put it back up to its angle and do the rest and then I can walk it into that bigger size instead of trying to have to guess uh, what size it is so anyway wasn't in the way there um, let's see if that gets you any more there uh, I'll have to check and see how much of a taper there is because you know by the time it gets up to the edge here uh, basically I tried to uh, I tried to cut down to the bottom to where uh, uh, you know as soon as I cut away the last little bit of metal there, um, you know, so that would have been, uh, 
I don't know exactly how far that would have been in there basically when it cut it, but you know if it was about there, that would have created a nice little uh, taper in there. I'll have to pop it out to find out. So uh, let me reset it up for the other and uh, we'll see how I'm that works. I'm not exactly sure how much I'm going to block this picture and stuff like that. Uh, kind of winging it at this point. I think I uh, need to go in about 300 thousandths, but uh, in center. Is, uh, how much lip I still have. Oh, I still got a good bit there. Okay. So far, that's pretty nice. I think I'll take a pick and see if uh, I can merge it in. All right, I kind of messed it up. Uh, you know, I kind of figured it was a practice one anyway, not too worried about it. But uh, basically, I can only extend the uh, the cutter out so far. And what happened here is, is I kept going down, going, man, what the heck's going on here? Well, what I was doing was, is I was running the snout of the uh, quill, you know, the spindle here, down in. And it actually ground that away and that stuff. So it was going beautifully until I hit that. So, uh, you know, it might be the kind of thing where I've got to uh, cut down a certain amount while it's still held in there. Or maybe try to extend it a little bit more. Uh, just do it carefully. But uh, since I've already hosed this one, you know, I can see if I can't uh, come out here and, and cut these a little smoother or whatever. But uh, uh they really look beautiful up to the point where I <laughs> realized I was gouging the so hell out of it. This is how the half inch one came out. Now you can see I just started to. Uh, soon as I, I recognized the noise this time as soon as I hit that, um, and that uh, that stopped me. So that I could probably extend the cutter out of the collet enough to uh, finish that, you know. And I and I might uh, play with that a little later. But uh, I wear graybeard. I gotta get to bed. Um, so anyway, I just did a little clearance thing. Now this could easily be finished up with a with a rat tail file. You know, may not come out nice and machined and as pretty as that, but uh, uh, it would certainly work. And uh, I didn't come over as far this time as I did on the other one, uh, right there. This uh, 
Uh, if this is going to get welded on, then, you know, it really is, I could have come over. Uh, but if it's going to get used for uh, countersunk holes like this, then, you know, I need to leave some space for that. So, because uh, I don't want it to uh, not seal. So, uh, anyway, no, uh, no particularly easy way to make it. If I, uh, maybe if I buy a dedicated tool. Now, you know, I've got a, uh, I bought a hole saw too. I might have to play with a hole saw and uh, see how that works. But I've only got two of these half inches, and uh, oh, I take that back. I've only got two extras. Uh, so this, anyway. <laughs>